Hello friends, as we know that DNA is a physical repository of genetic information in the cell that is passed on to the progeny. Expression of the information encoded in the DNA depends on the transcription of that information into RNA. How are the genes of prokaryotes and eukaryotes transcribed to form RNA products that can be translated into proteins is the question. Friends, let us together explore today the fascinating world of transcription process as it happens in prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms and understand this so-called gene expression mechanism. A gene is a repository of information that is it holds the information for making one of the key molecules of life an RNA. The sequence of bases in the RNA depends directly on the sequence of bases in the gene. Most of these RNAs in turn serve as a template for making other critical cellular molecules, proteins which are the major ones. Production of protein from DNA blueprint is called as gene expression. Producing a protein from information in the DNA gene is a two-step process. The first step is the synthesis of an RNA that is complementary to one of the strands of the DNA. This is called transcription. In the second step called translation, the information in the RNA is used to make a polypeptide. Such an information containing RNA is called as messenger RNA to denote the fact that it can carry the information like the message from one gene to the cell's protein factory which are ribosomes. The concept of a messenger RNA carrying information from gene to ribosome was developed in stages during the years following the publication of Watson and Crick's DNA model. In 1958, Crick himself proposed that RNA serves as an intermediate carrier of genetic information. He based his hypothesis in part on the fact that DNA resides in the nucleus of eukaryotic cells whereas proteins are made in the cytoplasm. This means that something must carry the information from one place to the other. Crick noted that ribosomes contain RNA and suggested that this ribosomal RNA is the information bearer. But ribosomal RNA is an integral part of ribosomes. It cannot escape. Therefore, Crick's hypothesis implied that each ribosome with its own ribosomal RNA would produce the same kind of protein over and over again. Francis Jacob and colleagues proposed an alternative hypothesis calling for non-specialized ribosome that translate unstable RNAs called as the messengers. This relationship resembles that of a CD player and a CD. The nature of the music that is a polypeptide in this case depends on the CD that is the messenger RNA not the player that is the ribosome. They also assigned four properties to these transient molecules the mRNAs as they appear to have base composition that reflects DNA but they are heterogeneous with respect to mass, are able to associate with ribosomes and have a high turnover rate. However, despite this basic scheme of protein encoding gene expression, there could be an alternative program also that is executed by the cells. In fact, most gene expressions may end once the RNA is produced. The RNAs thus being ultimate products of such genes. Therefore, broadly, any gene can encode two different categories of RNAs, the mRNA that encodes for proteins and the non-coding RNAs. 
the non coding rna category is quite diverse but for time being let us restrict ourselves to two such rna species which assist in protein synthesis but do not encode for proteins these are ribosomal rnas and transfer rnas